All right. Now let us quickly understand what the test vehicle abort mission is really all about and why is it so important for India. So let's take a look. What is the test vehicle abort mission? Uh, so basically this test abort mission is the space agency is looking forward to demonstrate the capsule carrying humans that can safely re uh, reach uh, the desired mission uh, basically 400, uh, 400 kilometers away from the earth and safely return back home after three days of living in that capsule. Now that is what the today's uh, flight uh, will be focusing on. This test vehicle is named as Flight Test Vehicle Abort Mission 1 uh, and ISRO will attempt to do it today itself. Now this will pave way for the further um, missions that are going to be carried out. Now, a similar test ejection seat in fighter jets will also be taken care of. So, after taking off, once the rocket is 12 to 16 kilometers away from the sky, it'll trigger the entire abort system and it'll eject uh, the seat system, the cr capsule where the crew will be sitting. So, it'll uh, take the crew escape system away from the entire rocket. Now, goal of maneuver to safeguard crew's lives. Now, uh, it aims to send the astronauts to an orbit of 400 uh almost a 400 kilometer and bring them back after three days. Now, if it completely succeeds, India will become the fourth country to send a human into the space after the Soviet Union, the US and the China. Now, um, this entire uh, abort mission is engineered for automatic function at any altitude. Now, uh, this entire mission has been created to function at an, any altitude, not just specifically for 400, when it reaches the 400 kilometer mark, but for it to sustain uh, different altitudes. Now, what is the test vehicle's abort mission? Now, test uh, flight will simulate a bot condition during the ascent. Now this is something very important now, during the ascent or the ejection part of the capsule uh, this will be a crucial test system in case of an emergency. Now in case of an emergency this test today which is going to be held uh, at around 8 a.m. it is a crucial one because it will help us understand how the escape system will function in case any malfunctioning of the entire mission takes place. How easy will it be for the crew members on board to reach out and uh, succeed with the thing. Now uh, moving on. Now, now joining us back on the broadcast is my colleague uh, Shristi. Shristi, help us understand what are the key objectives of the flight test vehicle abort mission 1, which is uh, technically scheduled for today. Uh, right, uh, Kuina, like you rightly explained, uh, this is a test vehicle flight where we are, we are testing the crew escape system of the rocket, whether it's going to function to the optimum capacity. Uh, uh, the safety of the astronauts, like uh, ISRO chief has, uh, Mr. S. Somnath has consistently emphasized that the safety of the astronauts is very important. This is the first time that uh, India is planning to take uh, astronauts into space. So uh, all these tests are going to ensure the safety of, of the astronauts. Here in this this test vehicle flight, uh, we are using a very uh, a basic rocket. It's a single stage uh, uh, liquid rocket uh, with uh, the crew escape system and uh, the crew module on top of it. Now, this crew module, uh, I think it's important to explain to our readers, is basically a 5,000, uh, roughly 5,000 5, kg unit. Mm -hmm. It's a capsule which uh, imitates the conditions of the Earth, where the three uh, astronauts are going to remain once the manned flight is going to take place. Today, we there are no robotic payloads over it it's just a you know uh, it's just a unit which is uh, you know uh, which sits atop the rocket and at an altitude of about 17 kilometers it's going to fall off now here uh, there'll be 10 parachutes which are deployed on this uh, crew module in, in in the final flight so uh, once the uh, uh, once the separation happens from the rocket from the crew escape system this crew module is going to fall into the sea and according to the uh, measurements according to the calculations done by isro is going to fall off roughly 10 kilometers from the coast uh, there's a team of the indian navy which is uh, you know which is ready and once it falls uh, mm -hmm. the uh, uh, the divers are going to set out and uh, basically recover the crew module from the sea uh, using a crane so uh, in, in in that entire operation all the subsystems 
that uh, that are in the rocket that are in that crew escape system are going to be tested mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, the you know one of the many tests that the space agency has planned out over the next two years uh, so if the tvd1 is successful what next so if it's successful then isro is going to plan for tvd2 which is test vehicle flight test 2 uh, there'll be uh, three uncrewed missions as well and the last we spoke to the isro chairman mr S. somnath he confirmed to us that the first uncrewed missions could be carried out uh, early next year in that uncrewed mission we are going to take robotic payloads right mm -hmm. and uh, test uh, if i uh, know if all goes well uh, if you remember uh, early this year we had also conducted an integrated airdrop test where we took the crew module to a height of about 2.5 kilometers using an Indian Air Force aircraft, and then it fell, uh, you know, into the sea to ensure the parachutes are deployed uh, exactly at the right time. And let's say one of the parachutes does not work, what is going to happen then? Mm -hmm. So uh, all these uh, uh, tech demonstrations, all these uh, 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 tests are very, very important for India to have a successful Gaganyan uh, in 2025. All right, Trishti, I'll request you to stay with us on the broadcast as Nikhil Lakwani, my another colleague, is joining us live from Nehru Planetarium. A very good morning, Nikhil. What more details do you have and were you able to speak to any of the experts in and around that area? So, Guvinda, as far as the details are concerned, all of them are waiting for at about 8 a.m. when the actual rocket is going to launch uh, at the Sri Hari Kota, which mm -hmm. is the Satish Dhawan Space Center. So, 8 a.m. is the time which has been given. But, uh, Kuhina, if you remember the details few days back, uh, especially on 17th of October, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a crucial meeting, high-level meeting, which was chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, where all the chief scientists of the ISRO, including that of chairman of ISRO, he also participated in the same way. Clear-cut directions have also been given from the Prime Minister's side that how he is very much enthusiastic about the space mi missions and also he has said that by the year 2035, that means after 11 years from now, he want a space station, international space station, so to say, which is going to represent the country India because so far, if you go by the details and as mentioned by Srishti and you as well a while back, only Soviet Union, US and China have been able to do so uh, as far as the manned missions are concerned and China also have their three of the astronauts residing in the International Space Station. So these are the clear-cut directions which have been issued by Prime Minister Narendra Modi has also sought some of the valuable suggestions from the chief scientist of ISRO and at the same time he has also said that he want Indian astronauts to reach on moon by the year 2040. So the planning is being done likewise but so far if we talk about today in particular in a short while from now in few minutes uh, from now at about 8 a.m. we will get to see that the test of the uh, vehicle about uh, the LV-1, which is the name which has been given as mentioned by Srishti, it is going to launch it. It is going to further pave the way for the qualification check, uh, which is also crucial at the same time. And we have been given to uh, understand further that this launch is going to take place at an altitude of 17 kilometer and it will check as to in case of any of the contingency, how the astronauts are going to escape the spacecraft, how they are going to eject the uh, aircraft safely. So safety mechanism is the primary point which is the objective uh, with which the mission has been launched and after uh, th the same the Navy has also been kept on the standby because when the uh, ejection is going to take place the uh, th things are going to fall in the sea level. So the uh, Navy is going to help uh, in the Bay of Bengal. So they have also been kept on the loop. They have also been kept on the check as well. So these are some of the details that we are looking forward to. But there are many of the checks which have uh, also to be ensured from the side of ISRO. So this makes it even more crucial. But as uh, further mentioned by Srishti that this is a single stage liquid uh, rocket. But when the actual mission uh, of Gaganyan is going to take place, then the rocket will be same of LVM3, that is the same rocket which was used during the time of the Chandrayaan mission. Back to you, Kohina. Right. Thank you so much, Nikhil, for all those details. We'll keep coming back to you. Hold on with us on the broadcast. But the